From flexing money that simply does not exist to desperate attempts to live a gangster life, this is the depressing world of rappers' fake lifestyles. You know, all those rappers out there flashing their big chains, cruising in fancy cars, and throwing around stacks of cash like it's nothing. It's like they're all living these super extravagant lives. But a lot of it isn't as real as it looks. In the world of rap, there's this unspoken rule that you've got to look super rich to get respect. It's all about showing off. The more bling, the better. But what is the truth? Those luxury cars and giant mansions we see in music videos? A lot of times they're just for show. Yup, you heard that right. They're often rented or they're shooting in some fancy Airbnb. You see, rappers often get what's called an advance from their record labels. This is like a big upfront paycheck that can range from a few thousand to millions depending on how big the rapper is. But here's the catch. This advance isn't just free money. It's more like a loan from the label and they expect to get it back and then some. Record labels sign rappers as an investment. They're not just being generous. They're looking to double or even quadruple their money. The advantage of being with a label is that they've got connections. They can get you on the radio, handle the promotions, and make those crucial industry calls. But in return, they usually keep most of the money you make from your music. You're not spending your own cash. You're spending the label's money, and they're going to want it back before you see any real profit. The thing about today's rappers is that a lot of them are like characters in a game. The more fans buy into these characters, the more money the rappers make. That's why even when they hit it big, the personas and lifestyles they show off online can get even more exaggerated. Take guys like Meek Mill and Lil Durk, two of the biggest names in rap right now. They rap about gun violence and a certain lifestyle, but what is the reality? They're probably not living exactly like they say in their songs. It's all part of keeping up the image that sells. And look at the whole situation with Gunna and the rest of YSL. They were seen as some of the realest guys in the game. Then everything flipped upside down. When the heat was on, suddenly there were accusations flying about snitching on Young Thug. It's like the code they lived by got tossed out the window. And the irony? Young Thug, who's always portrayed himself as this hardcore gangster, is now facing the consequences. It goes to show that a lot of these rappers are more like actors playing a role. You can't always take what they say in their songs at face value. But the problem is that a lot of fans get caught up in it. They buy into this persona that's been carefully crafted and sold to them. Social media just adds fuel to the fire, creating this alternate reality where everything looks cooler, richer, and more dangerous than it probably is. Or consider the whole thing with YK Osiris and how he portrayed himself versus what was really going on. Osiris made it look like he was living the dream, you know? hanging out with big names, flashing a luxurious lifestyle on social media, and acting like he was on top of the world. But then the truth started to spill out and it wasn't pretty. It turns out he owed money to a bunch of people in the industry. Drake, Lil Baby, Young Thug, you name it. And we're not talking small change here. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Before all this came out, he had everyone believing he was doing great. He was out there bragging about spending big on clothes and haircuts, like $300,000 on clothes and $1,500 on haircuts every week. It sounded cool until you realized that this wasn't just spending, it was his way of trying to fit in. He was living by the motto, if you don't have it, act like you do. And boy, did he act. But after his big hit in 2019, the guy went broke really fast. Yet he felt this pressure to keep up with his image and his rapper friends. So he started owing people money left and right. It's like YK Osiris became the poster child for how fame and money don't solve all your problems. Fame is like this addictive drug. It can make even the most famous people insecure and the richest ones hide things. There's also the case of Slim Jesus. He was this pale, unassuming guy who was pushing this tough, street-hardened persona and it was working. Everyone was talking about him. Even big names in the industry, like Birdman, were taking notice. But surprise, surprise, it was all a lie. He looked the part and talked the talk. But when it came down to it, he wasn't who he claimed to be. Then, towards the end of 2015, everything unraveled. 
In an interview with DJ Vlad, Slim Jesus just laid it all out there. He admitted that he had no criminal record and wasn't involved in street life. He basically confirmed that the violent, chaotic lifestyle he portrayed was all a big act. Suddenly, Slim Jesus went from being a talked about artist to a meme. You can't claim to be a Chicago drill rapper when you're from the suburbs, right? But here's the thing, I actually respect Slim Jesus for coming clean when he was asked about it. He might have lived a fake lifestyle, but he didn't stay in denial. That's more than you can say for some other artists out there, like Soulja Boy and 6 9 I mean, 6 9 literally tried to pay Lil Durk $3 million to start fake beef with him. He knew that having a gang image could boost his rap career. So he got involved with the Nine Trey Bloods funding their activities in exchange for protection and credibility. He portrayed himself as this hardcore gangster, starting beefs with legit artists like Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and Casanova. But he wasn't the one getting his hands dirty, he had his gang do the dirty work. The irony? 6 9 called out other rappers for being fake, but when the law caught up with him and his crew, he flipped and snitched on everyone. He threw them all under the bus, acting like he was never part of it. Now, Soulja Boy, he's on a similar path, minus the snitching part. His music isn't making waves like it used to, so what does he do? He sits in his mansion, cooking up fake drama with other rappers. Remember when he tried to start something with NBA Youngboy? All of it just to keep his name relevant. It's like he's promoting this image of violence and chaos because that's what grabs attention. Then there's Rick Ross. This guy's story is something else. He built his whole persona around this image of being a big time drug dealer. But guess what? The real Rick Ross is actually someone else. Freeway, Ricky Ross, a notorious drug lord from the 80s. The rapper Rick Ross just took this guy's name and backstory and made it his own. And when the real Rick Ross got out of prison and sued him, it turns out that Ross used to be a correctional officer. That's a complete 180 of the image he was selling in his music. It just shows you that a lot of these guys in the rap industry are playing characters. They're not living the life they rap about. It's all about creating this persona that sells. And the crazy thing is, it works. People buy into it and they make it big. Fans are drawn to these larger than life characters, finding entertainment, inspiration, or a form of escape in their music and personas. As a result, rappers who master this art of persona creation often find significant success, amassing fan followings and commercial gains. However, it's important for fans to recognize that what they see and hear from these artists is part of a show. While there may be elements of truth, much of it is amplified for entertainment. Understanding this distinction helps in appreciating the artistry in rap without blurring the lines between the artist's performance and their reality. So, from desperate attempts to live a gangster life to flexing money that simply does not exist, this was the depressing world of rappers' fake lifestyles.